Mr. Underwood started asking for volunteers so he could demonstrate some wrestling holds, but there was no way I was going to raise my hand. Me and Rowley tried to hide out in the back of the gym near the curtain, but that's where the girls were doing their gymnastics unit. We got out of there in a hurry, and we went back to where the rest of the guys were. Mr. Underwood singled me out, probably because I'm the lightest kid in the class, and he could toss me around without straining himself. He showed everybody how to do all these things called a half Nelson, and a reversal, and a takedown, and stuff like that. When he was doing this one move called the fireman's carry, I felt a breeze down below, and I could tell my singlet wasn't doing a good job keeping me covered up. That's when I thanked my lucky stars the girls were on the other side of the gym. Mr. Underwood divided us up into weight groups. I was pretty happy about that at first, because it meant I wasn't going to have to wrestle kids like Benny Wells, who can bench press 250 pounds. But then I found out who I did have to wrestle, and I would have traded for Benny Wells in a heartbeat. I got Fregley. Fregley was the only kid light enough to be in my weight class, and apparently Fregley was paying attention when Mr. Underwood was giving instructions, because he pinned me every which way you could imagine. I spent my seventh period getting way more familiar with Fregley than I ever wanted to be. Tuesday. This wrestling unit has totally turned our school upside down. Now kids are wrestling in the hallways, in the classrooms, you name it. But the 15 minutes after lunch where they let us outside is the worst. You can't walk five feet without tripping over a couple of kids going at it. I just try to keep my distance. And mark my words, one of these fools is going to roll right onto the cheese and start the cheese touch all over again. My other big problem is that I have to wrestle Fregley every single day. But this morning I realized something. If I can move out of Fregley's weight class, I won't have to wrestle him anymore. So today, I stuffed my clothes with a bunch of socks and shirts to get myself into the next weight class. But I was still too light to move up. I realized I was going to have to gain weight for real. At first, I thought I should start loading up on junk food. But then I had a much better idea. I decided to gain my weight in muscle, not fat. I've never been all that interested in getting in shape before, but this wrestling unit has made me rethink things. I figure if I bulk up now, it could actually come in handy down the road. The football unit is coming in the spring, and they split the teams up into shirts and skins. And I always get put on skins. I think they do that to make all the out-of-shape kids feel ashamed of themselves. If I can pack on some muscle now, it'll be a whole different story next April. Tonight, after dinner, I got mom and dad together and told them my plan. I told them I was going to need some serious exercise equipment and some weight gain powder, too. I showed them some muscle magazines I got at the store so they could see how ripped I was going to be. Mom didn't really say anything at first, but dad was pretty enthusiastic. I think he was just glad I had a change of heart from how I used to be when I was a kid, when I thought muscles were gross. But mom said if I wanted a weight set, I was going to have to prove that I could stick with an exercise regimen. She said I could do that by doing sit-ups and jumping jacks for two weeks. I had to explain that the only way to get totally bulked up is to get the kind of high-tech machines they have at the gym. But mom didn't want to hear it. Then dad said if I wanted a bench press, I should keep my fingers crossed for Christmas. But Christmas is a month and a half away, and if I get pinned by Fregley one more time, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. So it looks like mom and dad aren't going to be any help, and that means I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands, as usual. Saturday. I couldn't wait to start my weight training program today. Even though mom wouldn't let me get the equipment I needed, I wasn't going to let that hold me back. So I went into the fridge and emptied out the milk and orange juice and filled the jugs with sand. Then I taped them to a broomstick, and I had myself a pretty decent barbell. After that, I made a bench press out of an ironing board and some boxes. Once I had that all set, I was ready to do some serious lifting. I needed a spotting partner, so I called Rowley. 
and when he showed up at my door wearing some ridiculous getup, I knew I made a mistake inviting him. I made Rowley use the bench press first, mostly because I wanted to see if the broomstick was going to hold up. He did about five reps, and he was ready to quit, but I wouldn't let him. That's what a good training partner is for, to push you beyond your limits. I knew Rowley wasn't going to be as serious about weightlifting as I was, so I decided to try out an experiment to test his dedication. In the middle of Rowley's set, I went and got this phony nose and mustache Roderick has in his junk drawer. And right when Rowley had the barbell in the down position, I leaned over and looked at him. Sure enough, Rowley totally lost his concentration. He couldn't even get the barbell off his chest. I thought about helping him out, but then I realized that if Rowley didn't get serious about working out, he was never going to get to my level. He gasped and sputtered, and I eventually had to rescue him because he started biting the milk jug to let the sand leak out. After Rowley got off the bench press, it was time for my set. But Rowley said he didn't feel like working out anymore, and he went home. You know, I figured he'd pull something like that. But I guess you can't expect everyone to have the same kind of dedication as you. Wednesday. Today in geography, we had a quiz. And I have to say, I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. The quiz was on state capitals, and I sit in the back of the room, right next to this giant map of the United States. All the capitals are written in big red print, so I knew I had this one in the bag. But right before the test got started, Patty Farrell piped up from the front of the room. Patty told Mr. Ira that he should cover up the United States map before we got started. Mr. Ira said, Nice catch, Patty. So thanks to Patty, I ended up flunking the quiz, and I will definitely be looking for a way to pay her back for that one. Thursday. Tonight, Mom came up to my room, and she had a flyer in her hand. As soon as I saw it, I knew exactly what it was. It was an announcement that the school is having tryouts for a winter play. Man, I should have thrown that thing out when I saw it on the kitchen table. I begged her not to make me sign up. Those school plays are always musicals, and the last thing I need is to have to sing a solo in front of the whole school. But all my begging seemed to do was make Mom more sure I should do it. Mom said the only way I was going to be well-rounded was by trying different things. Dad came in my room to see what was going on. I told Dad that Mom was making me sign up for the school play, and that if I had to start going to play practices, it would totally mess up my weightlifting schedule. I knew that would make Dad take my side. Dad and Mom argued for a few minutes, but Dad was no match for Mom. So that means tomorrow I've got to audition for the school play. Friday. The play they're doing this year is The Wizard of Oz. A lot of kids came wearing costumes for the parts they were trying out for. I've never even seen the movie, so for me, it was like walking into a freak show. Mrs. Norton, the music director, made everyone sing My Country Tis of Thee so she could hear our singing voices. I did my singing tryouts with a bunch of other boys whose moms made them come too. I tried to sing as quietly as possible, but of course, I got singled out anyway. Mrs. Norton practically shouted, What a lovely soprano! I have no idea what a soprano is, but from the way some of the girls were giggling, I knew it wasn't a good thing. Tryouts went on forever. The grand finale came with auditions for Dorothy, who I guess is the lead character in the play. And who should try out first but Patty Farrell? I thought about trying out for the part of the witch, because I heard that in the play, the witch does all sorts of mean things to Dorothy. But then somebody told me there's a good witch and a bad witch, and with my luck, I'd end up getting picked to be the good one. Monday. I was hoping Mrs. Norton would just cut me from the play, but today she said that everyone who tried out is going to get a part. So lucky me. Mrs. Norton showed the Wizard of Oz movie so everyone would know the story. I was trying to figure out what part I should play, 
but pretty much every character has to sing or dance at one point or another. But about halfway through the movie, I figured out what part I wanted to sign up for. I'm going to sign up to be a tree because one, they don't have to sing, and two, they get to bean Dorothy with apples. Getting to peg Patty Farrell with apples in front of a live audience would be my dream come true. I may actually have to thank Mom for making me do this play once it's all over. After the movie ended, I signed up to be a tree. Unfortunately, a bunch of other guys had the same idea as me, so I guess there are a lot of guys who have a bone to pick with Patty Farrell. Wednesday Well, like Mom always says, be careful what you wish for. I got picked to be a tree, but I don't know if that's such a good thing. The tree costumes don't actually have armholes, so I guess that rules out any apple throwing. <laughs>